Hello. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to deliver uh, OpenStack NFV service training at scale with the integration of networking SFC, SFC projects and networking OVM project. Uh, my name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a principal engineer at Huawei. Uh, I'm also the project team lead of the OpenStack service function chain project. And hi, I'm John McDowell. I'm the SDN architect for Palo Networks. So, Kathy, take it away. Okay. Yeah, I guess I need that. Uh, the, oh, just use this? Yeah. Okay. I think we're in the clicker. So first, I'm going to go through very quickly uh, what is service chain. So by uh, service chain, what we mean is that through a centralized uh, control um, management and control platform, uh, different tenants flows can be automatically provisioned to go through different sequences of service functions. And these service functions can run either on virtual machine or run on container or run on the physical device. So this slide shows a service chain logical model and API. So probably some of you already viewed this slide in my last session. And so the service chain API consists of two parts. One part is the flow classifier, and the other part is a port chain. So the flow classifier um, specifies you know, the classification rules that are used to classify a flow, which will go through the chain. And the port chain consists of you know, an ordered sequence of service functions a specific flow will go through. So in this example, the port chain consists of a firewall service function, and then an IPS service function, and then a video optimizer service function. So each service function um, could have multiple instances, and they are grouped together into a group. So in this example, the firewall has two service instances, the IPS has three instances, and the video optimizer has two instances. So each instance is represented by a pair of ports, a pair of neutron ports. And, so, and these ports grouped together forms a port pair group. So the port chain is actually consists of a sequence of, an ordered sequence of port pair groups. So they are grouped together. Each group together is for load distribution purpose. So this shows a service chain, open set service chain uh, architecture. Uh, the, at the top is a neutron server. At the bottom are a, a few compute nodes. You can have you know one or more compute nodes. And then we have the on the neutron server we have the open stack service chain API. And then at the back end at the southbound different service chain driver can plug into it to realize the service chain functionality. So currently, we already uh, implemented the native path, which is the OVS service chain driver, which will the purple block, which will talk with the OVS, OVS service chain agent, and then will program the OVS switch to properly steer the flow to through the uh, service functions. And then the, um, there are other parts. Today, we're going to concentrate on the OVN parts. So how we do the OVN switch and driver, northbound DB and southbound DB, and then program the flow properly. We also, you can also plug in different SDN controllers. So currently, we already uh, implemented the ONOS controller parts to do the switch function chain functionality uh, defined um, uh, you know, by the user through the uh, OpenStack switch chain API. We're currently working also on the ODL, ODL path. So basically, uh, you have any um, vendor-specific controller can also plug in into it. So this slide shows um, how to, at the very high level, how to integrate networking SFC with uh, OVN. So on the right side is the architecture uh, diagram. So the the the, the the left side of the diagram shows you know, the Neutron API, how through the you know, MI2 plugin, it can map to the, uh, and the networking OVN driver, and then to, uh, to map the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the models, uh, the API uh, uh, data structs to the OVN's northbound DB, and then you know, to, uh, to, to create the um, flow in the southbound, uh, OVN southbound DB. Similarly, for a service function chain, it's similar, a similar architecture. So you have the OpenStack Neutron Service Chain API, and then you know, the uh, service function chain OVN driver is going to map 
that uh, API constructs to the OVN's northbound DB service function chain constructs. And then it's going to program on the, on the logical, to, to have the logical um, flow into the southbound OVN um, DB. So on the left side, it shows uh, the mapping. So uh, for the neutron, right, how we map it. So the neutron network will map to the OVN logical switch. Neutron port will map to OVN logical port. And neutron router will map to OVN logical router. A neutron security group will map to OVN SL. Similarly, for a service function chain, we have a, a, at the high level, as I showed in the previous uh, diagram, we have the logical port chain will map to an OVN port chain. And then the logical port pair group will map to OVN port pair group. And logical port pair will map to OVN port pair. And then flow class file will map to OVN ACL. And then the OVN North D will map these uh, um, the OVN um, these structs in the OVN northbound DB to the uh, south to the flow rules in the southbound DB. Uh, so this is a, a, a quick update on the party status uh, since uh, the Austin summit. So we have had two official releases. One is Liberty release, and the other is Metaka release. So you can go to the um, to the package uh, link to download the the release and try it out. Um, so for the Metaka release, we add the new features. So we add chain ID to put chain parameters. This is for the upper layer orchestrator and um, to coordinate the operations between the VF manager and the and the service function chain um, manager. And then we also add weight to the service function parameter for, low, for more smart and um, low distribution purpose. And we also add uh, port pair group parameters, uh, such as whether the, uh, that port pair group um, service function is a layer two service function or layer three service function. And also we have add a functionality which you can dynamically insert or remove a service function to or from a chain, um, just dynamic in real time. And we also, of course, add um, uh, some other things which to uh, satisfy the new stadium requirement, such as API reference, you know, admin user guide, tempest test, functional test, all those tests. And for the Newton release, we plan to do it in December um, this year. Uh, we are going to add a symmetric chain support. Uh, we are going to also to add the exact match based flow rule creation deletion. And we, of course, we, to satisfy the stadium uh, re new requirement, we will move the API to the Neutron Lib repo. So now all the Neutron API and the stadium party API were all in the same repository. And, uh, and then a few other uh, 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 work. So that's it. I'm going to hand off to Sean talking about the uh, That's Kathy, that was great. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, how we use service function to scale. And I want to do it from a security perspective to give us some real world use cases. So I would take it from so a simple um, service function to a much more complex model where we're actually deploying you know, potentially you know, hundreds of VMs and hundreds of service functions. And how does that, how does that scale operationally? Because we can talk a, a lot about just, oh, I can bring this up and bring this down. But as an operational exercise, how does security go with your, your workloads so you're actually secure? So, First of all, let's define the problem. So today, most security or a lot of security breaches are east-west. This is where um, attackers come into your network and then move laterally through your organization to figure out how to you know, exfiltrate data. This is done by criminal enterprises. And I use the word enterprise very specifically because they are doing it for a profit, profit motive. They're not doing it just for script kiddies. They're actually doing it to make money, illegally, but to make money. They want to steal credit cards. They want to steal industrial secrets. So they can take time. You know, they, they, pay their, they pay their staff, and they you know, take risks, and they you know, get, get a reward at the end of it, hopefully, for them. Not hopefully, not for us. So the first thing to do is gather intelligence. Just think of it. Think of it as marketing. There's nobody from marketing here. And <laughs> to figure out how to penetrate your network. I mean, today your network is probably as secure as your most gullible employee. Can you convince somebody to stick a USB drive in, click in a web link, 
click in a click in an email. At that point, they can you know enter your network and leverage an exploit. We have um, sensors and we work with other security companies. We collect data from a lot of our customers and we munge it to see what's going on in the network, the large, larger internet. We see about 30,000 new exploits a day. This is not brand new exploits, a lot of variations on a theme, but security is, you know, I'm not sure it's a big business or it's a you know, high, high attack surface. So this whole phase where people are coming in and trying to achieve unauthorized access to your network, they're trying to attack your, least, your most vulnerable points. They don't have to get to your um, critical data yet. They want to come laterally through your network. Once they're in, they can establish a command and control center. Um, Stuxnet, the, the virus that um, attacked the Iranian um, centrifuges, was really sophisticated. It actually downloaded new DLLs, depending where it was or what it was attacking. So it, it actually dynamically morphed itself to actually attack different parts of the network. So once it has command and control, it can then start sucking your data out. This may take you know, three or four months. I mean, a lot of the big retailer attacks we saw in the last two or three years, they took three or four months. The attackers were in the network for that length of time. So this is scary, but it's also an opportunity because each of these points is an opportunity to block the attack. You can insert things, security functions into your network to block, detect, and attack. And this is where service function starts becoming really interesting because you can actually now dynamically insert functions into your network to, to protect yourself and to stop attacks at any point in this chain. So that's the first part. The second part is a little, 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 more, little more complex, because now you have two organizations. Security guys saying, protect everything. DevOps, deploy quickly and fast. <clears throat> the CSO says, I don't want to go to the board and tell them we have a breach. The CIO wants to go to the board and say, hey, we're using the cloud, and we're deploying new apps every 15 minutes. The CSO is going, no. <laughs> So how do, you, how do you solve this you know, dichotomy? Well, with service function chaining, we can actually search functions dynamically. And I'll talk a little bit more of this as we go through the demos and try to explain, walk through how this actually happens. <clears throat> so just to step back a little bit and say how we actually implemented this, taking you know, the work Kathy did and her team and building on it. So we integrated this into, we're using OVN, really to, so OVN, because OVN scales. I mean, there's been some talks um, over this week, I think, about you know, OVN scaling, and hopefully you've, you've seen some of that. It's also very logical, in terms of its logical description of the network. So for service functions, we don't really care where they live, we want to know where they actually can protect parts of your network. We want to be able to move them around, because this whole thing of dynamicism is really important. If any of you were at Austin last year, you saw the, the talk from Intel, where they just deployed 10,000 VMs and 2,000 containers in two minutes. So if you think of the DevOps guys doing that, then go to the security guys and say, oh, by the way, I've deployed 12,000 workloads and I need them secured in two more minutes. <laughs> so what, the, what we've done, and you know, this work was re really easy, actually, uh, um, because Kathy's team built this driver model for networking SFC. So we, take, we can leverage the SFC APIs, which are common across all plugins. We built the single interface into the plugin model, which was essentially you know, a few hundred lines of code to implement. We built the, a flow classifier plugin too, because the model allows us to have different flow classifiers for different environments, which is really important. Then we're going to talk to Neutron OVN, and Neutron or networking OVN, Neutron is a source of truth, so there we actually could actually, if I give it a port pair and port chains, I can actually go and check to make sure the ports actually exist, logical switches actually exist, so I can actually do validation, because Neutron database is a source of truth. Neutron OVN provides an API link into OVN, so we, can, we, we leverage that to talk directly into the OVN northbound database. So those two pieces were really easy, and you know, great credits to Kathy and her team and the networking OVN team. For OVN, we picked OVN because we weren't a bit abstracted from OVS. I, I personally didn't really want to go have to do a program and mess with OVS because 
It's hard. We'll make something easy. So luckily with OVN, we had to make three changes. One, in the northbound schema, we added um, four more tables, a port chain table, a port pair group table, and a port pair table, and a flow classifier table. Very much like Kathy mentioned in the discussion about what the API model is. So we reflected that straight into straight to OVN. And then in OVN North D, we added a new stage in the pipeline, in the ingress pipeline for port chains. So I'll talk about the rules we added for that. So we added um, two ingress rules and two egress rules. For any flows that come in, we can chain them and direct them into uh, a, a port pair or a, a chain of port pairs. So this is all very simple, and at the end of the presentation, there's some links to the, the GitHub repositories for these, for these changes. So the North D extensions. So if you look at North D, there's a set of tables for the logical switch, and they go through from you know, security ports to ACLs to DCP, et cetera. So what we did, we added a, a new table. This is some work in progress. It's actually at you know, location 13 today, but we're actually moving it up to be close to the ACLs, where we've actually checked, we added some rules to say, if this comes in, chain these things together. The reason why we got, we're moving to ours towards the ACLs is because for the first time we, we did it, we actually put the flow classification in the port chain. Now we're moving it into the ACL table, which gives us some real power because then we can leverage all the ACL capabilities of OVS and OVN. If they add more ACLs, we take advantage of them. And it goes back to the architecture Kathy was talking about earlier in that we have a flow classifier plugin in the NFC, SFC model that matches OVN and we're, we're, we're clean and home free. So this translates into this complicated diagram. So the red is the ingress rules, and what color is it? Blue, it's bluish is the egress rules. So if you look at the first rule of the 150, they're prioritized, so the higher priority gets processed first. So in the ingress path, when a packet's going from at two to at one, the first rule says if it's coming from the VNF and it's going to at one, deliver to at one. That's the highest priority. The lowest priority is a sort of catch all saying if it's coming in and going to at one, stick it in the port chain. If you have more um, VNFs in the chain, it's basically just chaining the things together. Just chaining, chaining. On the other direction, if it comes out of at one going to a destination, the, um, the 100 rule applies. It says if it's coming out of this um, app and it's coming from the app port, stick it, into, stick it into the VNF chain and all the way through. At the end, it says deliver it to the final destination. So very simple. And we're moving forward. So let's do some demos. So, the demos are recorded because I'm chicken. Don't want to try and do Wi-Fi to Santa Clara. So we do two demos and we kind of build on them. The first one's very simple, just showing, inserting uh, a VNF into the port chain and going through the model. So let's, uh, no, wait. Okay, so those are the applications we want to secure. So if you see up there, the, a port pair we can configure using the port chain API. And then we're actually going to manage that VNF through a VNF manager going off the, off the network. So looking at the chain table, there's nothing, there's nothing in it. We're an empty table. If I go up now and run my orchestrator, which is a, a Python script, I do add port chain, port pair group, flow classifier. If I go and look now at the, the table, I'll see I've inserted the rules into the southbound database. So let's go and try and ping between the two applications. Oh, nothing's happening. That's not good. Ah, because the VNF has a block rule. Kind of showing that the VNF is actually working, it's doing its job. We're actually providing some security between these two applications. We're now controlling flows between those two applications on the same network. So now ping's working. <coughs> Just by changing the, changing the rule from deny to, to enable. So you can see it here that these are the session flows, and you'll see it refresh, and 
basically the flows are now all go through the, the VNF manager. So the other thing we want to do is, you know, my, my mother always told me to clean up after myself, so we should go and clean up here and run this, you know, reverse script and pull out all the port chains and port pair groups and flow classifiers. Because if I want to do this at scale, I want to be able to insert and remove service functions rapidly and dynamically. I don't want to have to have um, a rule explosion. So I cleaned up after myself. So that was a really simple demo, just to sort of set the stage. We showed all the traffic going through the SFC, you know, using SFC to steer traffic through a VNF using the, the standard APIs. This is coming in from Neutron, not Neutron, so um, OpenStack APIs, pushing all the way down through networking SFC, through networking OVN, through OVN. So you're using standard OpenStack APIs. You don't actually see any of the underlying plumbing. We've added remote remove rules. You notice we didn't actually have to specify the location of the VNF or where it was in the network, or which compute node it was on. OVN takes care of that. OVN just says, you create a logical model, you plumb it in, and it, the southbound database connects, the controller connects the ports together. The VNF here is working as a bump in the wire. This is kind of important, we think, for scaling, because there's no networking in the VNF. So that means that the VNF moves around, you don't have to change um, VLANs, routing tables, etc. so you can scale. And we talk a little bit more when we when kind of stop at load balancing. You can imagine load balancing a bunch of VNFs together. If you don't have any networking, it's really easy. You can just spray packs across the, the interfaces. And just to reinforce, I know we're using um, our VNF here, but we made no changes to the VNF to support this. So the, the key thing, one of the, the design goals we had was to not require us having you know, custom VNF code to support network, you know, service function chaining. We want to be able to deploy things you know, off the shelf. And we want to encourage other vendors to do the same thing because we think there's an advantage in having a common infrastructure, pushing all this down to the plumbing that just works for everybody. So let's get a little more complex. Going back to the security and DevOps guys. You saw from that demo is I can go in there and I can configure security manually. So going back to that Intel demo where I have 12,000 apps coming up in two minutes. Going into a VNF manager and trying to configure 12,000 apps in less than two minutes is not possible. <laughs> so how are, we, how are we gonna solve this? So what we want to do is move the security piece into the configuration and the, and the design part of the application and then enable the DevOps just to orchestrate application deployment. So they can, they can go and deploy 12,000 apps with security, not having to worry about, worry about um, the security team. So the security team really, so the way we've defined it is we want to create policy tags. We want to create a sort of cluster of tags. They describe the application, compute, database, web, where it is, staging, production, maybe geography, you know, Europe versus US, depending on what the criteria you have in your organization to construct a security policy. And construct those policies independent of the instances deployed. To say, this is the policy I want for my organization. This is what is approved in my organization. And those tags are the sort of lingua franca between the security team and the DevOps team. And you see from this orchestration, the two red boxes, the two things I've added since the previous demo. The previous demo just went through basically creating the application, creating the port pairs, adding the ports, doing SFC. So now we've added two things. We've added tagging, and we've added um, taking the tags and instance, instance information and pushing it to the VNF. So this is orchestrated, so if you think of we actually need an orchestrator here, and if you're down to the show floor, there's a demo at Intel booth for the, the Intel Open Security Controller, where we've actually implemented some of this in a real controller environment. And to, all this demo is all um, just Python scripts I've written, but it, it's, it's all using the Neutron APIs, which is really important. So let's look at those two things. So tags of metadata. So this is just using Nova tagging. So I've gone into Nova, and I've tagged all the VMs, all the all things. So I've used simple tags, compute, production, web, production, web, staging, compute, staging. You know, you can imagine having a much more complex um, taxonomy. But just keep it simple just now. 
Another thing is uh, there's an API into the VNF manager that takes the instance of the app I've just created and the tags attached to it and pushes that to the VNF manager. And this is all done at runtime. This is this part of this orchestration that you can automate. So at this point, you can actually do this. You can conceivably deploy 12,000 applications with security without having to get the security team involved. So this allows you to do real-world deployments with VNF and using service function chaining and actually scale. And when I say scale, I mean scale operationally. So your teams are actually productive. So doing another little demo. A little more complex than that this time. I could have made this a lot more complex, but I think the screen resolution would have you know, been a problem. <laughs> so this is already set up. So what we're going to do now with multiple networks, multiple VNFs, we have different policies. So if I look at the tables now, I'll see I've got um, rules in a whole bunch of different rules. So I have different rules for different networks now. So there's two logical switches here. So each one has a, has a set of rules for those two, um, my staging production network. Once I have that, here's the, the metadata. So these, this is the same metadata that's in Nova. It's now in the VNF. This is where the bridge happens between um, the two worlds. That's all that's required is really the agree on the metadata tag. So the security team and the um, DevOps team agree that this is, our, this is how we want to talk to each other. And then I can create complex policies. And the policies then are driven by metadata. It's ands and or rules. And I can have rules that actually have application types in them. So I can, I can narrow down what's allowed in various environments. And when we push down the, the changes, you'll see in the VNF, the IP addresses suddenly start to appear. As the, the instances get created, I'll push the IP addresses with the tags down to the VNF, so the whole process is automated. Go back to that API, API again. So you see these are the IP addresses of those network elements. So, I'm done, so this is all done without security guys being involved. This is all a DevOps, a DevOps script or a DevOps orchestrated environment. And you notice the deny there. So if DevOps doesn't put any, any tags, the default is deny. So the security team has, has this blanket. So now we're seeing I'm iperfing between the two nodes, and that works. Great. And what I've done with the rule is said, all those two things can do is talk iperf. The web could talk to the compute through iperf. Compute cannot talk to web, and they can't, you see, the session running there. And you'll see the can't ping. Because in production, I want, I want to turn off ping, because going back to that previous thing about the attackers coming in and you know, looking at your network, they can do ping sweeps and go, oh, here's, here, here's nodes we want to attack. So you want to lock down your environment. This is just a way of doing it. The rules you want to do are, are completely independent of you know, um, the system. You can make your own rules. So, Hopefully that shows that we've actually taken a simple example and made it a lot more complex. Even though that network is fairly small, uh, hopefully you can imagine we can take, build based on that previous demo and building on it, we can now take service function chaining, which before we can deploy everywhere, but if you, can't, if you deploy it with all the same rules, it's kind of a challenge. Now you can deploy VNS with service function chaining and apply policy with it. And the policy is really defined through OpenStack metadata. We used um, Nova tags. I could equally also have used Neutron tags. So you can have as complex tagging scheme as you want. And we added a notification to, down to the VNF. So <coughs> potential to scale this to thousands of apps. So hopefully we'll be able to show you that you could take this and give your DevOps team a set of scripts or an orchestrator and deploy VNFs everywhere. Does require ST and orchestr orchestration. You know, it's a key missing piece in, in this. So I said we've been working with various people, and you, you all have your own orchestrators. So it's it's, it's something to think about. Um, so to wrap this up, let's talk some ongoing work. There's probably a bunch of people who are working with me in here. Uh, we talked about the ACLs and flow classifiers in OVN. So that piece we're working on. Hopefully, I don't know if Flavio's here, but hopefully the next couple of weeks we'll have that done. 
we want to integrate load balancing because OVN now has load balancing in it, which is a really powerful concept. So you can imagine OVN doing load balancing for us for port, for port pairs. So all I need to do is put the port pairs into OVN, and OVN takes care of the load balancing. And remember, it's, it's at a logical layer. It's not at a physical layer. So it's really important because all this stuff is done using OVN rather than having to modify OVS. Additional networking, this is maybe a question for the audience. I mean, we're very much focused on having bump in the wire. And, you know, does anybody see use cases for having sort of L2 or L3 VNFs? You know, it's, to scale, it becomes very complex, but we're, we're here to listen. Container integration, we have this working with Docker. We can show service chaining, you know, Docker containers. Probably we can do, we can do others. And next thing is start to push this code upstream. We're working with the OVN team and the OVS OVN team and Kathy's team, and hopefully we're hopefully the next OpenStack summit will have yeah. something more to report. Mm -hmm. So, conclusions. I think we've really demonstrated how service function chaining enables deployment scale of VNS. Without service function chaining and making this standard part of infrastructure, this whole thing wouldn't work. If we had to do this unique for every single SDN control or every single approach, it gets really complex. I mean, it's complex for you and it's complex for DevOps. So the scale is really implement, is, is enhanced by having standard service function chaining. The meta-driven policy then allows us to scale numerically and operationally. The ability to move rules in and out of OVN and get pushed into OVS allows us, you know, people to deploy and undeploy workloads seamlessly. No requirement for networking the VNS. You know, doing this bump in the wire really helps scalability because I don't have to go mess with the VNF and try to do L2 or L3 change to, you know, set next hop or to you know, do a bunch of static routing tables or even worse, SNAT and DNAT, which I personally hate. And because we really stressed, you know, even though from Palo Networks, we stressed not making any changes in the VNF to support this. So this is open up to any VNF. Um, you know, Flavia wrote a, a really simple app that just a few hundred lines ago that took pack us in and pack us out. So it, it shows that a standard, you know, not standard VNF, but a, a simple VNF can, can work equally well. And we can use that for testing. So hopefully I think we're showing, you know, we're solving real world business problems. This is something that, you know, we and our customers face. This is not something that's a, you know, academic exercise. We have people who want to, want, need to solve this problem. So using networking OVN and SFC, I think we've solved this problem. So thank you and questions. There's a bunch of, you know, more information you can go and, you know, links you can go and reference about SFC and OVN and you know, some blogs and then there's a repo there for the, the code you can download and you know, give us feedback. So I have any questions? A microphone. Actually I was just thinking about the uh, the use cases. I mean there's a lot of brownfields out there with all these appliances that even you guys used to make, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I assume that is a use case where you actually want to utilize all that metal that you actually have. And so I assume people will ask for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, whether it's, you know, you know, a hardware box or a software box, I mean, as I think Kathy mentioned earlier, you know, the service function chaining doesn't really care. It's really a question of, you know, there's, like, there's compute there. I mean, the whole idea of having software just means you can move around easier, you know, moving, you know, hardware. And, and you can skip the addressing. But I mean, if you're yeah. actually leaving the virtual world, it's yeah. going to be tough it, it, to do with without yes. L2 or L3. Yeah, yeah. works the same. Anybody else? <laughs> Not really a question, but just a comment you made me think of um, with, with the number of VMs and containers and so forth we're deploying. You often see on hand soap, kills 99% of germs, which is great. There's only 10 billion, you apply it to something with 10 billion germs on it, and it's terrific. There's, there's only 10 million germs left. Same thing. We deploy tens of thousands of VMs, and 99.9% .9 of them were developed by 
premier developers and 99.9% of, of those 10,000 VMs are secure. So you've only got 10 vulnerable VMs. That's, that's good, right? But we need the, with service function chaining, even the ones that are missed, we can, we can put additional controls on top of them, even if the people responsible for them slipped up once in a while, just one out of a thousand, and at least it gives us an extra layer of uh, protection. I think, yes. I, to, I think I need to rephrase that statement. It's not only your most gullible employees, but your most careless developers. <laughs> I think it's what, what you're referring to. <laughs> Any other questions? No? No? Thank no. you all. Thank you.